The internet is a buzz. Xbox specs are confirmed, and man, it's a monster. Is this it for the PlayStation 5? Is victory assured for the Xbox Series X? Good question. Let's get into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another video. Before we get into this episode of The Medicine, do me a huge favor, y'all. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all y'all. Straight up, y'all know the deal. Y'all know the reason why, because I am not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. Okay, let me do something real quick here. All right. Okay, you should see this article, and everybody should be very familiar <laughs> with this article is this is the um xbox wire article that um contains the the reveal or the confirmation from phil spencer himself which details what you can expect from the next generation of gaming all right and in this he he confirms specs about the xbox series x which is going to be xbox's uh ninth generation console um, it's been rumored to be, you know, partnered with a less powerful console, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. So we're not really going to get into too much of that right now. But in this reveal, Phil Spencer set the internet a buzz by confirming specs like um, 12.7 teraflops, I believe it was. Um, he also confirmed, let's take a look here. Uh, 12 teraflops, variable rate shading, hardware accelerated, direct X ray tracing, quick resume for multi multiple games, and smart delivery. So, wow, there's just a lot of stuff going on here that has been confirmed. Um, with that being said, let's just go over what I feel are the most important features that have been confirmed right now. And let's talk about what does this mean in the grand scheme of things in regards to Microsoft versus sony when it comes to consoles again because it, we get it microsoft said that they feel that their competitor is google and amazon because of the cloud space um but with that said they still gotta you know they gotta contrast what they're offering um versus what sony's offering in the console space okay but let's take a look here so they broke down their what their offerings are going to be next generation in three major pillars those three major pillars are superior balance immersion in an instant and the next generation of game compatibility i'm not going to go over the entire article i'll leave a link to it below and i urge you guys to check it out i'm um, very interesting read um gives you a, a, a peer into the, the mind state of phil spencer as it relates to what he wants to offer next generation that being said i'm going to pull out the most important pieces of it um so as it relates to superior balance um there are Next generation custom processor, variable rate shading, hardware accelerated direct X ray tracing. To me, the next generation custom processor though is the most important factor here. It reads, Xbox Series X is our most powerful console ever powered by our custom design processor leveraging AMD's latest Zen 2 and RDNA 2 architectures, deliver delivering four times the processing power of an Xbox One and enabling developers to leverage 12 T flops of GPU graphics processing unit. Very big deal for the simple fact that um, you know, with the RDNA 2 or this, I mean the RDNA 2 architecture in the Zen 2, there was a lot of argument of that if, if that was going to be the the architecture of uh what was being offered with this console. It appears it will be the AMD uh T flops. Uh, opposed to the Xbox One, or, or let's put it like this: the X, therefore the Xbox Series X T flops opposed to the Xbox One X T flops, they're more efficient, meaning they mean more. So, you know, if, if we were to use um, the Xbox One T flops as a gauge, these 12 T flops here could possibly mean i'm just throwing a number out there they could be they can mean 15 t flops if you compare it into the compared to what's being offered by the xbox one x if that makes sense right so it's a lot more efficient a lot more powerful than just comparing it to the xbox one x would imply right um next we got the immersion in an instant 
Um, and they talk about SSD storage, quick resume, and then dynamic latency input, HDMI 2.1 innovation, and 120 frames per second support. As far as this pillar is concerned, there are two things that are very important to me. The SSD storage, they, st they state here, with our next generation SSD, nearly every aspect of playing games is improved. Game worlds are larger, more dynamic, and load in a flash, and f fast travel is just that, fast. And then as far as 120 frame support, with support of up to 120 frames per second, Xbox Series X allows developers to exceed standard 60 frames per second in favor of heightened realism or fast pace action all right so i think the ssd and 120 frames per second support are important because um not only does it go to bridge the gap uh or close the gap somewhat between what and the way more expensive pcs can do and that'll help out with people that don't that want to stream right if you want to stream your games and you want to do it with high fidelity you know, um, and you don't want to deal with all the codecs and all the crap that you got to deal with the PC, then in a closed box environment, you have less to worry about. You can just start your machine and hopefully just stream. It just all relates to how well Xbox and PlayStation integrate their, their system and allowing you to stream. Can you do the overlays and stuff like that? How simple will they make that um, integration? But if they make that all simple, then yeah, this will be a great thing for streamers. In addition to that, um stadia and then i imagine amazon they're going to be working they already they're going well, stadia already has a rapid start solution you know we've seen it before you've seen it in my comparison no low times no low times you know so it's very important that if xbox wants to stand on the stage with stadia and whatever amazon presents that they cut out the low times because that just defeats the purpose as far as i'm concerned in cloud gaming um and then 120 frames per uh, uh, FPS support. Again, I relate that to what they want to offer versus Google and Amazon. Uh, Google already said that they got their 120 frame 8K racks <laughs> on deck ready, you know, to, to, to just plop them in when needed, when they feel that it's necessary. So it's important for uh, Xbox to be able to do that. All right, so the last pillar here is the next generation of game compatibility. Uh, the sublets of that are four generations of gaming, smart delivery, Xbox Game Pass. Um, a lot of people in this regards are talking about the four generations of gaming that you get to, you know, play your 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 previous games with via backwards compatibility, and that's definitely cool. And then they also talk about the smart delivery, where if you buy a game uh, this gen and then there's a next gen version that you don't have to double dip that the system will be able to say oh okay you're now playing uh watch dogs 3 or whatever it's going to be called on even though you bought it for the xbox one you're going to be playing it on the series x therefore we're just going to boost it up to the series x version so that's cool and that's that's a great deal for consumers and again a very important thing to do because again stadia is doing it right now Amazon's going to be likely doing it in the future. When you buy one version of the game, it just all you know, it all of them just boost up once they increase their server rack. So it's very important that Microsoft does that. Um, and then they also put PlayStation 5 in a, in, a, in a very serious box because PlayStation 5 isn't known to do stuff like that. They're known to make you double dip. So now they put PlayStation in a very peculiar situation. So it was very important for them to give out that detail. With all that being said though, y'all, all that being said, very, very interesting read and very important for Xbox to do that. They, they needed to do something like this to invigorate uh, gamers. Does any of this matter? And to that, I say this, um, this beckons me back to memories of when the Xbox One X released, you know what I'm saying? And got me all excited. We were talking about the gigawatts and the terahertz, right? And um, Sony was trying their best to combat what they were offering with the PlayStation 4 hardware. I'm not talking about the game, I'm just talking solely hardware. And, you know, they brought in an Xbox, you know, in turn brought Digital Foundry out to confirm that their system was, was powerful. And they did that and they got all of us excited, got me so excited that I bought the console you know what I'm saying? At launch, and I've never done that before with the console. I usually wait three months to deal with the the fact that consoles off the conveyor belt normally are faulty within the first three months. So, um, and we know the result of that. Like the system got mollywopped 
very capable system, great, but it didn't have the first party hardware or software, excuse me, to show why that hardware was so impressive. Because then you had a $200 box come off the belt that had a game in God of War that looked better at the time than anything that was on that box. So that killed that narrative. And I get it, people are gonna say, well, this is a new, this is a console release, or people are gonna say it's RDNA 2 over one and all other stuff. And I, to that, I say, who cares? Who cares? We know right now that Sony has the talent. Don't get me wrong. I know Ninja Theory can do great things with Fidelity. I know Obsidian is a monster developer, but we haven't seen what they produced under the Xbox helm yet, except for Bleeding Edge and Grounded. So until we see better offerings from them and hopefully at E3 we'll see that, this is not going to move the needle where Xbox needs the needle moved. But the casual gamer, here's what I need my Xbox brethren to understand. That yes, you guys are getting a lot of hype and you're getting way more hype at this particular moment, at this moment right now, than PlayStation is. But if you go back in time, just not too far, to the video game awards, y'all got that little bit of hype there was really no buzz about PlayStation 5. PlayStation 5, three weeks later, put out a logo and they destroyed all the hype that you had. They were they were mollywopping it, okay? That's my new phrase, my new catchphrase, mollywop. And I know that, and, and, and content creators know that. When we go to put our tags out there and, and, and look at what's the highly rated thing that's being talked about, it was all PlayStation because PlayStation is recognized Per the content that they put in people's hands or people or the content that people were able to see with their own two eyes in my case four eyes <laughs> so here's the problem all these gigawatts and compute units are fantastic for us and it is important to get the oracle invigorated to help do the ground root the, the, the grass root action rather for mind share but if it can if it doesn't make sense to the to, to the average gamer it's not tangible to them it goes nowhere so at the end of the day we need to understand that xbox has to go above and beyond what excites us to our core and they gotta have something tantalizing for the casuals so with all this excitement i don't want everybody going out here doing r.i.p playstation 5 podcast don't get trapped in the same okie doke that you did with the xbox one x Go out there and say, this is fantastic. This is great. Thank you, Phil. Now make sure that you don't do a dud of a presentation at E3. E3 has to be fantastic. You have to talk about stuff that ain't coming um, this year or even next year. You got to show us stuff that looks tantalizing regardless when it's coming. Because you got to have the, in order for this to be sustainable, the casuals are going to want to have to come over in droves, period. They got to do better than they did last gen, period. And until then... All this is just simply a dog and pony show that we pretty much already knew about, but it's just now been confirmed. And that's it from your boy MM2K. Let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below, because like I always tell you, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the Broadband Bullies, PNTS Network, the Hard Knock Digital Culture, and yes, the Stadia Dosage. And with that said, don't fall for the okie doke, y'all. Take this momentum, take it back to Phil and say, okay, y'all better be laser focused on them games. And with that said, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.